I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to our website, globalmathinstitute.com, the YouTube channel, and the WhatsApp group, Free Math Solutions. I am glad that during these tough times of COVID-19, we are able to provide you with some help. Many questions are flowing in, and I've got great support from a team to provide solutions to these questions. Keep safe, keep posting questions, and keep learning. Here is a brilliant question from one of our subscribers, Morgan Smith. I hope its solution will help many others. This question is based on polynomials, remainder theorem. The question here is, the function f of x equals to m x to the power of 4 plus n x cube plus 68 x square minus x minus 6 gives a remainder of 0 when divided by 2x plus 1 times 4x minus 1. Determine the value of m and n. So the key words here which you notice are that the function is gives you a remainder of 0 when divided by these terms. So that really means that 2x plus 1 and 4x minus 1 are factors of the polynomial, correct? So let me write down this as a note. Let's understand. So we have 2x plus 1 and 4x minus 1. So they are factors of the polynomial f of x. Now when I say they are factors, it means that from these statements, it means what? It really means that the value of the function f for minus half, since at 2x plus 1 we have a factor is equal to 0, and also for f of minus, this will be plus 1 by 4, will be 0, right? So that is what it means. So 2x plus 1 is a factor provided that the value of the polynomial at x equals to minus half is 0, and 4x minus 1 is a factor if the polynomial value is 0 for x equals to 1 over 4. So that should give you two equations, and we have two unknowns, right? So I hope you understand the strategy here. So this will lead to two equations, which can help us to solve for two unknowns, which are m and n. Is that clear to you? So that is the concept. So let us substitute and um, find the values. So if I substitute minus half, so we get f of minus half in the equation, we get m minus half to the power of 4 plus n minus half q plus 68 minus half square minus of minus half minus 6. And that should be equal to 0, since this is a factor. Clear? So we can simplify this. We get m and 2 to the power of 4 is 16. Here will be negative n, 8. And this will be positive 68. 2 squared is 4. And this will be positive half. And this will be minus 6 equals to 0. You can simplify this equation and uh, multiplying by 16 will help us. So we get m minus 2n plus 4 times 68, right? So 4 times 68 will be 272. And here we get 16 half, which is 8. And we have to multiply 6 with 16. 6 times 6 is 36. 3, 9 equals to 0. So now you get your equation, which is m minus 2n is, we can actually combine the terms here, take it to the right side. So, so 272 plus 8 is 280, and then from 280, we'll take away 96, and we get the number, which is 184. So we have plus 184 equals to 0. So that is how you're going to solve the equation for x f of minus half 
and you get your equation. Let's take it to the next page and then we'll continue with our solution. So, so we got the equation which is uh, m minus 2n equals 2, let's see, uh, minus 184. So we're taking to the right side. So from the first condition, we got one equation. Now let's continue. We will actually now substitute the, the value 1 over 4. So f of 1 over 4 is what? So we'll get m times 1 over 4 to the power of 4 plus n times 1 over 4 cube plus 68 1 over 4 square minus 1 over 4 minus 6. That should be equal to 0. So 4 to the power of 4 is 256. So we get m over 256 plus n over 64 plus 68 over 16 minus 1 over 4 and minus 6 equals to 0. We can now multiply by 256, correct? So we get m plus, well, we can use the calculator. There is no harm in using calculator at this stage. The numbers are really big, right? So now we get 16 times 16, 16 times 68, which is, let's use the calculator we get the number as 1088 minus. So we are multiplying by 256, right? So 256 divided by 4 gives us 64. And now we'll multiply 6 by 256. And that gives you how much? So 6 times 256 is 1536. So, so this is all equals to zero, right? So that is what it is. Okay, so no need to write equal to on this side. We are writing zero on the other side. Okay, so that gives you the second equation. And let me write this equation as m plus 4n. We'll add all these terms and take it to the right side. So we get 1088 minus 64 minus 1536. So that gives you 512 with a negative sign. When you take it to the right side, it becomes 5, 1, 2. So that gives us two equations. Our first equation here is m minus 2n equals to minus 184. And this is the second equation. Now from here, we can always find the, the value. So if I now perform the operation, which is, let us say, we can eliminate m by taking away. So we'll do equation 2 minus equation 1. So when you do equation 2 minus equation 1, what do you get? 4n minus minus 2n gives you 6n, which is equal to, and when you take away 184, it really gets added up. So you get this as 696. And now from here, you get the value of n, which is 696 divided by 6, and that is equal to 1 1 and 6. So get the value of n as 116. Correct? You can now find the value of m also using any one of these equations. Let's use this particular equation and find the value of m. m is equal to minus 184 plus 2 times n, which is minus 184 plus 2 times 116, right? And let's use the calculator to find this value, which is equal to 48. So we get our answer. The value of m is 48. And the value of n is equals to 116. Is that clear to you? So that is how we are going to solve this particular question. I hope that makes sense. Correct? So now we have both the values of m and n. Uh, at this stage, I think you've understood the process of finding the equation. So we could write that the function for us, f of x, is basically equal to, you can substitute these values. We have 48 for m, x to the power of 4, plus 
n is 116 so which is 116 n x cube plus 68 x square minus x minus 6 so you have a polynomial now whose the all the values are given to you correct now here is a question for you question is find other roots correct so use your learnings about uh, polynomials remainder theorem factor theorem and then get the other roots and then sketch the graph is that clear to you so i hope that will help you to understand this particular chapter better i hope it makes sense feel free to post your questions keep posting your questions and participate actively in providing solutions also to us thank you and all the best